pick up the pencil. You're about to listen to the Savvy Radio Show. Learn from real life real estate investors, experience revealed with the Savvy Landlord as your host. Yeah, yeah, this is the Savvy Landlord. You have just rolled in or slid in or glided into the Savvy Radio Show. Super stoked that you're back. By popular demand, I got a lot of great response from the systems. I think it struck a chord there. There's a lot of people that have been frustrated with life. They're not growing. They're not going to the next level. Is because they keep repeating the same thing over and over again and trying to get a different result. You can't. It's impossible. So how do you do that? How do you step aside? You get someone else to do it. You delegate it. And how to delegate it, you create a system, a plan, or a program, or whatever you want to call it, steps, and the soon as you do it, the soon as you create a system or a process or a procedure, you can get on with what you want to get on with in life. All right. So no further ado. Anyway, let's just recap. Hopefully you've listened to the episode a while back about how to create a system. You got to create, you got to brainstorm. You got to come up with ideas. You got to sequence them, put them in order, type them in, write them out, screenshots, whatever you can do, get them on paper. And then have a friend or someone else. I had my mom sit next to me, excuse me, take notes and uh, get it done. And the the point is you got to get it done. Simple. So here we go. You got to rent it out. All right. So I, you know, sometimes I name them stages. Sometimes I name step one, step two, whatever. So we're going to call it stages today. We're going to be different. Stage one, pre-qualify. The number one thing, you know, you get a bunch of tire kickers I, in reality, you know, the, so to avoid the tire kickers the, or, you know, I ask a series of questions. I pre-qualify them. So I have my ad posted up on Zillow or wherever, uh, hot pads, and they send me an email is that, you know, I'm interested in the house. Everyone's interested, right? Well, you need the first thing you got to do. Stage one is I pre-qualify the inquiry. I shoot a quick email right back. And I have a quick email through canned response. So it's in Gmail. Go to labs and create a canned response. You just just drop down, click a button. So you can open up any email and click a canned response. And my canned response is, boom, thank you for your interest in 123 Elm Street. Number one question, when do you want to move in? Number two, will you be living by yourself? If not, how many people will be living with you? And three, have you driven by the property? And four, what? When would you like to view the property? The, the crazy thing is, is, you know, an average house that should sit is roughly less than a month. Okay. Two weeks is my ideal situation a month that as soon as I post a house, I want the pre-qualified. I want applications coming in in the next day and so on and so forth. Well, if you start taking phone calls and start fooling around people, oh, I'm not going to move until, the, you know, until June, that's six months from now. So it, it you're, you just wasted a three minute phone call. Okay. Even if you're, you're dumb, if you took the phone call and, and then you're real. And if you, if you saw that they left a voicemail and you transcribed it and you call them back and they're like, yeah, I'm not going to move until the end of the summer. We have a a property that's right by college and we get this all the time. You know, I'm graduating in June and you know, I'm looking for a place now and it's, you know, Christmas holiday break. I'm like, listen, it's not going to be available. So just call us, you know, 30 days before or 60 days before and query about the property. But the first thing is, when do you want to move in? That's the first question. I just ask them that question. Well, you live in by yourself. You know, people tend to fill out an application one person, but then they got 10 people living with them. You need to ask that. Here's the ultimate question. Have you driven by the property? Most people and a lot of tire time that's wasted is like, they see that the house is in Oklahoma city. $550 for a two bedroom. Oh man. Yeah. That $550 is in the hood. <laughs> okay. So that same house over in say Edmond is at about nine fifty, but over on uh, the hood it's five fifty. but people from Dakota that are transferring because of an oil job, they see five fifty and they jump on it and they've never driven by the property. Here's a caveat for you. Anybody that's out of state, don't rent to them until they see the property. It doesn't matter what they're saying. It doesn't matter where they're transferring. No matter what, they won't like the property. It's nothing like they were. Wherever they're coming from, their home is better than your home. Their their neighborhood's better than their... They don't know the neighborhood. Don't don't take any money from anyone from out of state. Well, I'll pay today deposit. Don't do it. Trust me. And then um, when you like to view the home, well, I can't view the home 
uh, from two weeks to now. When you know, and another question after I pre qualify them, hey, uh, when will you have the deposit? Well, I won't have the deposit until my tax check comes in. Well, obviously, they're not going to be qualified for the property if they can't even come up with a deposit today and they're thinking three months from now, it, it's not going to happen. So, it's a canned response stage one pre qualify, booby doo, stage two, step two, whatever is screening in the office right out the gate. They're approved or rejected. So if they haven't responded to my can responses, they're not even in my world. But if they jump through that hula hoop, boom, I go to stage three. If they're approved, if they're rejected, I do nothing and disregard the application. Time is, is the essence. If you listen to the other podcast, yes, uh, I ran 50 units on 10 hours. Okay. Well, I didn't respond back to every person when they said they can't move in until six months from now, or they don't have a deposit and for three months from now, I'm not going to call them back and say, I'm so sorry. Uh, you're not good enough. Okay. Um, if they hound me and say, why aren't you renting to me? Well, you have a 200 credit score and you just got evicted. And I won't even respond by saying that I have a canned response again, a system canned response that says, You were declined because of these three items or one of these three items. I don't even, I don't even get into the aspect of, well, cause you got terrible credit. It just hurts people. They know they have terrible credit. I just list the three things out. You may have a blemish on your credit. You may have an eviction and I leave it alone. Most people, it gets offensive when you tell them you suck. You can't live on our property. That's when it becomes offensive. If I just list out three neutral things and they're pretty average things, credit, history, work history, not enough uh, income, it's not offensive. All right. So stage one, I pre-qualify them. Stage two, I go through screening, approved and or rejected. And if they make it past stage two, stage three is the approval stage. So after they get through all those questions, I hit them with the 90% you're approved. So if they're serious about renting, yes or no, they're 90% approved. I get them to fill out the application as fast and as smooth as possible. When they fill the application out, I kind of go over the application. I, as soon as they, they do my pre-qualify and they're somewhat soft approved, 90% approved. I send them an instructional email. Uh, that's another can response. And I go, this is the application process. This is what's going to happen. This is the timetable it's going to take. This is why we are requesting money from you to do your background check, your credit check. So I just, I'm up front. So if they go stage one, stage two, they're somewhat approved. Stage three, okay, now we're going to ask you for money. If you don't give us uh, your $25 or whatever you're charging, uh, some people charge $50 for the background check then we're not going to move on. This pretty much weeds out all the people after they go, man, they're going to pay for it. Okay, great. Then they're serious. And so when they're serious, I'm serious. So then I go through stage four and this is the approval process right at the gate. One, I call the employment to verify their income. I get pay stubs, how long they've been, they've been um, working at their job. If they've only been working there for 30 days and they're looking for a new place, it's usually not a good candidate for one of your properties. I send them another email. I go, we need, you know, $500 to hold the property. You have five days to get us the $500 or sometimes we do three. That's another can response. Uh, step on stage four, step three, I call the applicant and ask them when will they be paying it? So I email them pre warn them. Hey, we're going to be asking for this deposit because if you don't give us a deposit, we're going to continue to show the home. We're going to continue to market the home. But if you're serious about it, come rolling in here right now and we'll hold the property for you. And then there's other things that go along with that. And then I I just call them and and straight up verify them right then. I double check their roommate. I mean, I double check um, their details. Do they have a roommate? Um, You know, do due diligence like go on Facebook, Google their name. Look on county assessor, a county court documents, criminal court documents, sex offender uh, websites. We go through a whole checks and balance. Again, that's another system. I have a checklist for all the things I got to do to verify this tenant. 
And then, boom, stage five, I collect the deposit. I make them sign a non-refundable agreement. And that document, it may be on my website. I'm not really sure, but I need to put that on there. It is um, like I've gotten burned before. If you roll up here with your deposit, we will take it off the Internet. We will no longer show the property in exchange for your deposit. If we cannot provide the home to you for some weird reason, if a tornado came through, we would refund your deposit. But if um, you decide that you found a better home or you and your boyfriend want to elope and live in Las Vegas, you're not going to get your deposit back. Okay. So I make them sign an agreement. And in that agreement, it has a timetable. You have two weeks, la da 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 da. Then I create the stage six. I create uh, my lease packet, which is pretty extensive. It's about 40 pages. Then I have a 30 minute lease signing with them, 40 minutes. And then I give them the keys and do the walkthrough. That's pretty much it in a nutshell. The ultimate thing that you should also get one is create systems. Duh. Okay. Create systems pr- provides freedom. But you got to do this. And I don't know. I'm going to make you think about it. What, what is he talking about? You got to have a checklist. That's right. No matter who you are, how amazing only one unit or a thousand units do this now create a checklist and on my checklist i think i have a free checklist on the website go to savvyinvestors.com or savvyradioshow.com or savvylandlord.me or the savvy landlord book whatever but i have a free checklist on there and i just go through that after i sign the lease with them and you would not believe how many times i forget to photocopy their driver's license I do. I, I get so consumed them uh, with, I just rented out another unit at $600 a month. That's $7,200 a month for my family. Okay. Now, of course, minus, you know, PITI and all that other jazz. But when I, when I have a, I call it a lease signing party, I get juiced up because they may go on for five years. They may be a $35,000 person. When they come into the office, I offer them water and I say, yes, let's sign a lease. Now I'm, I'm pretty abrasive up front. Like we don't tolerate no late payments, but in back of my mind, I'm like, this is, this is a $7,000 transaction, $7,200 transaction. And with the $7,200 transaction, you get a little excited. You forget the small details. Like, did you give them all the correct numbers? They need to call OG&E. They need to call the natural gas company. Did I take photos of the property? Oh no, I forgot. I'm going to run over there. Did I explain to them about the air filter situation that they need to change your air filter out once a month? Did they sign the smoke detector addendum? Did they, did they sign the mold, um, addendum, you know, all those things that, you know, 40 something documents, you may slip your mind, but if you have a quick one page checklist, which is on our website, check it out for free. Um, you will save you tons of time and it will give you freedom. Anyway, this is Steve Van Kallenberg. I'm the Savvy Landlord. You're listening to the Savvy Radio Show. If you like what you heard, spread the word. Um, leave a comment, email, text. You can text me at to the number 545454, the word ask, and then it will, will hit you back and you can reply and say, that was an awesome episode. Anyway. Other than that, whatever you do, all you do, think about, buy assets, create income for yourself, be financially free. If you're financially free, you can help someone else be free and uh, not be a slave to the nine to five. Thanks for listening to the Savvy Radio Show. Glide online and listen to our other motivating episodes at SavvyRadioShow.com. Connect on Twitter at LandlordBook and always be buying assets. 